started a series last week from my book Secrets of a Giant Killer and I didn't get very far I hope I can at least finish the first message today but I'm not going to make any promises I'm just going to be spirit led is that okay because we're going somewhere we're going somewhere it's a new season it's a new day we're living in the last days Rita's already said that we're living in the last days all you got to do is listen to the news look on social network just it's everywhere there's there's chaos everywhere on planet earth but there's so many bright spots there's so many bright spots you have to you can't just read the Bible you have to read the Bible you you can't just look at the situation and the circumstances you have to be spirit led one very bright spot that I would be remorse if I did not mention to you today is that our newest member of Metro Tab is here today Noel Polk has made her debut she's about a month old now mama came back last Sunday our student pastors, Michael and Ashley, we're so proud of you guys and so proud of her. Hallelujah. Isn't that, a, isn't that exciting? Yeah, no sleep. <laughs> but even when you don't know it, God's working. Even when you can't see it, he's working. Amen. So thank you, thank you for being here today. I want to just jump right in. And everybody's heard of David and Goliath. I mean, marketing companies all over the world. Am I a little bit loud? It seems like this is loud up here today. Is it okay? But marketing companies all over the world have used David and Goliath as a springboard for all kinds of marketing ploys and different things. And so the world knows about Goliath, David and Goliath. That story's been told and told and retold, and, and so many of people all over the world know that story. But as I told you last week, when David went to the brook to get five smooth stones, it was not because he thought he would need five shots to take Goliath down, but Goliath had four brothers. So he knew that if he killed Goliath, that the other giants, and they were giants too, would be coming after him. So he had one for every giant. Preparation. Preparation. You've got to be prepared. You've got to see what's coming. So I'm going to give you just some quick recaps from last week, and then we're going to jump right in to breaking the cycle David was a giant killer get that in your spirit David was a giant killer but he didn't keep that to himself oh you missed that see what we have we are supposed to give to others this book I'm not supposed to read it and hold on to it and not tell you about it, not tell you what it says and not tell you what it says about you. I'm not supposed to do I'm supposed to open it to you. What I have is not mine to keep. It's mine to give. The knowledge, the insight, the revelation, the anointing, the favor, the hope, the inspiration, the resources, whatever I have is a gift from God to give. What you have is not yours to keep, it is yours to give. Now lest you misunderstand me, please know that everything that comes through your hands, a portion of that is yours to keep. Unless God says, Oh, that came to you? Give that over here. But by and large, everything that flows through you 
that you can share with others, a portion of that is yours to keep and use for your needs. And if we as Christians could get that, we would not hold on to everything that comes in our hand because we think there's not enough to go around. That's why we don't give because we think, oh, I, I, I got to hold on to this. I got this paycheck. Oh, I got to hold on to all of that because there's not enough. There won't be more. But it might be tight tomorrow. So we, we hold on to it when reality is everything we have is to be shared, to give. And a portion of that that comes through your hand, as I said, is yours to keep unless somebody comes up and gives you something and God says, now, that's not yours. Place that over here. And he does that sometimes. And David was a giant killer. But that was not all. That was not to keep. That was to share. So if you didn't know it, understand that one of the secrets of a giant killer is he taught others to be giant killers. I mean, how unfair would it be to him and to others if he was the only giant killer? Then every giant that came along, they would be wearing him out. Say, oh, David, come over here. You got to kill this giant. Now, come over here. Come over here. There's, there's one over here. Because we face giants on a regular basis, right? Let me just see if I'm at the right pace, place. How many of you are facing giants this month or this quarter or this last six months? There are giants. See? They come from everywhere. They come all the time. There are different kinds of giants that we face. So I want to expose the giants. And in this book, if you've not read it yet, I would encourage you to get it. We've got some more coming. I think we're out or almost out, but we'll have some more hopefully by the end of this week. If not, the early next week, at least before we finish this series. But I'm going to expose the giants because... As you learned last week, the Bible says we don't go to war against flesh and blood. The person that lives across the street from you, the person that did you wrong in a business deal, the uncle that abused you, our war is not against flesh and blood. Your enemy is not a person. But the Bible says we don't war against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers about against spiritual wickedness in high places there is a spiritual battle a spiritual war if you please that is going on it's demonic in nature and we are in a battle against the evil one and his troops one third of the angels fell they were cast out of heaven so that's the battle that we are in. And we've got to wake up. We've got to realize that. So in this series, I want to reveal to you those demonic spirits that manipulate and control people. And in the Bible, you'll find out that the names of these giants, all but one are named. Goliath was the first one. The second one, his name was Saf or Sippe. Same name, same uh, Hebrew root, same person. Saf or Sippe. The third one, his name was Lami. The fourth one, the Bible doesn't name him, but he was called the giant of great stature. He was bigger than all of them. And the Bible says that he had six fingers and six toes. And then the last one was Ishbibinab. And their names have meaning and insight into their spiritual strategies, their demonic strategies to attack you and distract you and to keep you off base and I really believe that these demonic spirits these principalities control nations because entire people groups fall prey to these demonic spirits entire people groups turn to false religions and they fall into certain culture styles cultural styles and certain habits and and processes and things that they do but these spirits these demonic spirits that have been alive for 
hundreds or thousands of years, these spirits are only spirits, fallen angels that try to control. And in these last days, they are in a panic. They're just running around. It's causing chaos everywhere because they know their time is short. So we have to open our eyes, realize we are in a spiritual battle, and this is our guide. This is our roadmap. This is the instruction, the instruction manual that will teach us which way to go. Does that help? So it's time to break the cycle. What kind of cycle? We talked about this a little bit last week, so I won't, I won't talk a lot here. But it's time to break the cycle of emotional wounds. Somebody did you wrong when you were nine years old. Get over it. I'm sorry. People are going to do you wrong. They're going to lie on you. They're going to betray you. You're going to have some Judases in your life. You're going to have some friends that walk out and you thought they were your friend, but you found out they're not. When they show you who they are, believe them. People don't always maintain covenant. Sometimes people break covenant. I'm sorry. Get over it. Suck it up, buttercup. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your pain. I'm sorry you were done wrong. It doesn't, it doesn't discount how bad you were hurt, how bad you were wounded. It, I understand that. It's wrong. You've been done wrong. I've been done wrong. We've all been done wrong. Some of you have been hurt by family. Some of you have been hurt by church. Some of you have been hurt on the job. Some of you have been hurt physically. Somebody sued you or somebody did this to you or did that to you. And I'm, I, I, I'm sorry. I pray for you. I want you to be healed. I want you to forgive. I want you to go forward. But it is time to break that cycle today. Today is time to break that cycle. It is time to break the cycle of all the emotional wounds that you have been carried for too long. I'm sorry you didn't get that job. I'm sorry somebody lied on you. I'm sorry somebody set you up for failure. I'm sorry. But you're better than that. You're created in God's image. You're better than that. Shake it off. It's time to break the cycle of financial difficulties. Amen, 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 amen. This Bible says that we're the head, not the tail. This Bible says you have the power to get wealth. This Bible says that we should give and it will be given to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will pe people give to you. This Bible teaches us the principle of sowing and reaping. It says if we tithe, he will sanctify everything we have left. It says if we sow a seed, he will multiply it back to us 30, 60, 100 times. It teaches us the principle of stewardship. And if you will honor this word, God will honor you and Today it's time to break the cycle and quit being afraid to pay your tithe and quit being afraid to be a sower and quit being afraid to bless your neighbor and to bless somebody else. There is more than enough in God's kingdom to go around. There is plenty because God is the God of the universe. He is the God of plenty. If we need more gold, they'll find more gold. If we need more resources of any kind, there will be more resources of any kind. If we need more health care, there'll be more health care if we need anything God will give us that because he's the God of more than enough it's time to break the financial cycle today today just because you're poor because you feel like you're broke just because your daddy was and your granddaddy was and just because you put your foot over your shoes when you were growing up because you had a hole in one shoe and you were covering it and there was a hole in both of them just because that was your plight as a child it is time to break the cycle you are not poor it is a spirit that we are battling. It is a spirit of lack, a spirit of poverty. We break the cycle because we serve the God of the universe. There is more than enough for you and everybody else. It's time to break the cycle of personal hardships. Some of you right now, you are dealing with personal 
hardships in your life because you were abused maybe because you aborted a baby and you didn't know better at that time and maybe you've lived with the guilt and you've lived with the pain it's time to break that maybe some of you are dealing with pornography maybe it's you're addicted to it and you and you say, can't seem to get away from the computer and the internet and whatever but it is time to break that cycle I'm sorry but the, the devil is a liar he is your enemy he is the one that is trying to take you down I'm sorry if you have battle with physical illness and physical maladies and you kept going around the same mountain over and over but it is time to be healed today I'm sorry if you are dealing with addictions of some kind or alcohol or or drugs or cocaine or heroin or whatever it is but it's time to break that cycle of that personal hardship today God is God I said God is God he can break that off of you the chains are breaking off the cycle is breaking it's turning around today it's breaking it's breaking it's breaking it's breaking we declare it's breaking his word teaches us and when we get into the names of these giants you will see how simple it really is we make it so hard We make it so hard. It's time to break the cycle of marital strife. I don't care how many relationships you've been in that have been broken. I don't care how many times you've been married. Today is the time to break the cycle and to love the one that you are with in a holy, righteous, godly relationship. If you're not married to them, get married. If the relationship is not godly, maybe it needs to be broken off. If the other person is not going to change. But it's time to break the cycle today. If you have lived over and over and over and over in life making the wrong decisions. Bad decisions. Over and over and over. And you just can't seem to get it right. I break the curse today. 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 Not next week, next month, next year. But today. Today on this Sunday, on the 11th month, on the, what's the day? The third, fourth, fourth day. On the fourth day, I break the curse. We break the assignment. We break it off of you. We break the chains. We break the shackles. We break them off of you today. Today, the cycle is breaking today. And they can be broken. They will be broken. They are broken. See, most people allow their, allow their past to define and dictate their future. Just because you have been in this, you think you can't get out. Why do you believe the lie? Why do you believe the devil? Oh, I heard what you said. Well, Pastor, my, my circumstance, if you could see my circumstance, then you would understand. You would understand. I, it's where I am. I, I, I love to be over there, but I'm over here. I, I love to have faith, but I, I have fear. I would love to be able to give, but, but I'm in poverty. I would love to walk in healing, but, but, but my body is sick. My circumstance, I, I've got to the doctor said this. So what? Do you believe this word? Whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? I shall believe the report of the Lord. I choose this day. You choose who you're going to serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. I choose to believe the report of the Lord. See, in order to break the cycle, you must realize that you're in a cycle. You have to recognize the cycle to break the cycle. A cycle is a series of events that regularly repeats. It's a set pattern. And you just keep doing the same thing, making the same choices, believing the same lies, living in the same broken relationships over and over living week to week, sometimes even day to day, just over and over, just just a cycle. And I know the devil, he works on your mind. The, The battleground is your mind. 
and he works on your mind and he tells you you're stuck. You can't get out. Your daddy was an alcoholic. Your granddad was an alcoholic. Your daddy used to beat your mama. He used to beat you kids. Your granddaddy beat him. His daddy beat him. So you're going to beat your wife. You're going to beat your kids. No, 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 no. There's a bloodline. And I'm crossing the bloodline today and drawing a new line and telling the devil, don't you cross it. Back up. Back up in Jesus' name. Break the cycle. Do something different. Go in another direction. Say something you've not said before. Do something you've not done before. A cycle keeps us going over and over and over. Now, first of all, to break the cycle, you have to identify who you are. I heard Rita Ball stand up here a few minutes ago and said, I know who I am. So you got to know who you are. You have to know that you're a child of the king, that you were born to be a king or a queen. You have to know that. You have to know what this book says. You have to know Genesis 1, 26 through 28, where he said, have dominion and subdue. Subdue the enemy. Subdue poverty. Subdue sickness. Subdue the devil. Subdue fear. Subdue trouble. Subdue pain. Subdue it. Because Genesis 1, 26 through 28 tells you, you have dominion, which is a domain. Kings have domain. You were born to be a king. God said, let them have dominion, but not just have the dominion. Let them also subdue. Because every king has to defend his domain. Oh, you didn't hear that. Every king has to defend his domain. There are always challengers. There are always other kings. There are always evil kings. There's always somebody that wants to slip in. They want to take what is yours. There's there's always been that. But if you're born to be a king, you have to stand strong and firm with the sword in your hand defending your domain from the enemy. So you have to identify who you are. When you know who you are, you're okay. I'm trying to figure how I'm going to get through this message today. (laughs) Because I'm still on the recap from last week. can't help it this this is this is where we are this is where we're living this is what God wants us to talk about today when you know who you are when you identify yourself you begin to break the cycle when you realize who you are in God when you realize what God's word says about you then the cycle can be broken if you don't know who you are you can never break the cycle Tony Doley if you don't know that there are millions of dollars in you and you are anointed as an investor as an entrepreneur you can't break the cycle if you don't know that you are called of God with an anointing to preach and to pastor and to teach then then you will never break the cycle. But I tell you today, there are books in you. There's millions of dollars in you. There are resources in you. You, If you don't know that you are anointed to build relationships, that you have an anointing for network, then my God, how can you ever break the cycle? But if you know you have a network anointing and that you connect with people everywhere you go, red, yellow, brown, black, and white, then the cycle is broken. David... If you don't know that you are a mentor and that you are a coach and there are books in you and there are young men and not only your family but men that you can, you can teach and you can train, then how can you break the cycle for your kids and for your grandkids? But it's in you. The books are in you. The anointing is in you. You are a coach. My God. Where's Rob? Where's Rob? Where's Rob? There he is. Rob, if you don't know that there are songs in you, but not just songs. See, see don't miss this. When, when you know who you are, your songs are not just sweet little sweet songs to sing in the house. 
the sooner you understand that God has given you songs to the nations, songs to the world, and that when you open your mouth to sing, God has given you a voice that shatters principalities, that pierces the darkness. The sooner you understand that that anointing is, it's in you, it's on you. And see, Rob is so humble. He is the best Christian I know. Oh, you didn't hear me. He doesn't allow himself to think bad about you or to say anything bad about you. He just loves God and loves everybody. How commendable. But God has put something in you. He has given you a voice to pierce the darkness, to break assignments, and to break curses. And when you understand that you were born to be a king, but that is your gift in the body of Christ, then when you stand to this mic next time, and that's just going to be a few minutes from now, when you open your mouth, something's going to break. When you begin to sing, your voice is going to pierce the darkness because that is your identity. God has placed that in you, but not just songs, not just lyrics, not just music. He's put books in you. He has anointed you as a mentor. He has anointed you as a coach, and you have to identify with what God has called you to do, and it's bigger than you are. Deshaun Bottom, my God. God has put some things in you. You've got productions in you. You are full of productions. You are full of music. You are full of ideas. And you are full of creativity. And when you understand that, when that identity clicks with you, my God. It's not just for Chattanooga. Thank God we have you. You are a blessing here, and I hope you always maintain a home here, and this is home. But but what God has put in you is for this country. What God has deposited in you is bigger than this city. It's bigger than this region. He has put that in you for this world, my God. See, even just a moment ago, Rob, when they were standing on this stage, Nalita is is here. Nalita is from Puerto Rico. Dios te bendiga. See, this house has an international anointing. Because right over here, we have a Bermuda anointing. And right up there, she's from Ukraine. I remember when when Chris Hill was here, we were in the other end of the building. And he was waxing warm. And at that time, he had been the youth pastor at Bishop T.D. Jake's house. And he was preaching and she was playing like this. He was preaching and she was through that. Natasha. He would preach a little bit and she would go. And he would say, I love the Lord today. And she would go. He would say, God is in this house. And she would go. And every time he would preach, she would back him up on the organ. And then in a few minutes, he stopped and turned this way and saw her. And and it just threw him all off. He just said, he said, no, 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 it can't be, no, no, because, because the package didn't match the performance. See, see, we always want the package to match the performance. And we have these patterns, watch me now, we have these patterns 
and these boxes and these compartments that we put things in. Oh, let me change that. That we put people in. And when they don't match the box, when they don't fit in our compartment, we have trouble with that. But I stopped today to tell you it's time to break the cycle. It's time to break the pattern. It is time to break what has been holding you back. Some of you are living in a box and you do real good on the, until you get to the side. And then you run over here to this side and you, and you do real good and it's a glass box and you, you'll go here and then you'll run back here. And you've got a lot of freedom inside the box. But today... If you need a sledgehammer, if you need a glass cutter, I don't know what you need to break out of the box. But some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you, you know, you know you, Joey Ronka. You are anointed not just to do business, even though there are millions of dollars and resources in you and businesses and ideas and creativity. You've been hiding behind that. You have the gift of prophecy, and you know you have the gift of prophecy, and you know the anointing of God is on your life to change nations, to change young men, to mentor people, not only in that anointing, but in the business. That anointing is on you, and you've, you've been hiding under that anointing. You've been hiding under that business and that entrepreneur, and, and, and you've learned, and you've grown, and that's great, and thank God for you, but you know you've got more. You know you are anointed with a prophetic word in your spirit to speak and proclaim and to shout a loud voice to the nations. It is in you and you know it's in you. And Regis, you know, you know. Let me just tell you what you know. The gift of restoration is in you. The anointing of restoration is in you. You've been there. You've had the success. You've been all over the world. You've walked in all these gifts and you've lost it all, but you know how to get it back. You've lost it and you've got it. And the, the restoration anointing, the resolve, it's in you to teach others because God is going to send people to you. He's going to send young men and some young women to you and your wife, Connie. And when they come, they're going to need to be restored. And that anointing is on you. That anointing is in you. And by the way, you need to write the next book because there are books in you, not just for Chattanooga, but books to the nation. See, when God gave us this house, it was a diverse house. It has been from the beginning. We have been intentional. Pull that down a little bit. We've been intentional. And I told you a few weeks ago, I was at a conference downtown, invited by the mayor. And he was talking about racial reconciliation so after the meeting I went up to him and I said what you're talking about today I'd like to show that to you I'd like for you to come to Metro Tab he missed it it went right over his head he turned and called his assistant and said he said tell Pastor Ball get, get him on my schedule he wants me to come to Metro Tab and share and, and she came to me I said I'll get back to you and I have nothing against him. I, I, that's not that you missed it if you think that's what it was. I wanted him to come here and see you. Yeah. I wanted him to see that what he's trying to do in this city is sitting in this house in these chairs. I wanted him to see that we can have unity among great diversity. Our greatest gift and our greatest challenge is one and the same. Our greatest gift in this house is our diversity. But when a new person comes in, they have shock, like sticker shock. It's like going to a car lot and thinking they're going to spend 20000 and the cheapest thing on the lot is 49000 And they go, 
sticker shock. And they walk in here looking for somebody like them. And all of a sudden, there's this sea of diversity. And they go. <laughs> and they're just trembling. And it's our greatest strength. But it's also our greatest challenge because some people don't stay long enough to realize you're here. There's somebody just like you here. They're business people. They're homeless people. They're blue-collar workers. They're white-collar workers. The nations are here. The diversity is here. Red, yellow, brown, black, and white. You're here. But you have to stay long enough to see that you're here. And then get connected not only to the person that looks like you and works at a similar place. You've got to stay long enough to realize you've got some things in common with some other folks here that don't look like you, that don't work in the same place. I love to see the pictures posted on Facebook when hitched and some of these groups go to eat and they're all diverse. All ages, all colors, and the waitresses are trying to figure it out. They're like, is that the uncle? Is that the granddaddy? I wonder, I wonder who she's with. And they're trying to figure it all out. See, we have successfully broken the cycle in Chattanooga. This is a safe place. This is a sanctuary. This is a refuge. Come on, help me shout. God has done something here that you don't see in America. I know there are some places, obviously, thank God. But by and large, this is the most segregated hour of the country. But when you know who you are. You've got to know who you are. And let me just tell you how to know. That thing that you love to do, that's who you are. That, that gift that you have of hospitality or serving or leadership or writing, that, that's who you are. That thing that you love to do the most, that's who you are. Let it out. Let it out. Be yourself. We have enough copies. There are enough carbon copies. Be yourself. Quit trying to be somebody else. Be yourself. Look at that finger. Look at that thumb. Look at that finger. The print that's on that, there's over 7 billion people on this planet. Nobody, not one of them can match that fingerprint and that thumbprint on me or on you. So why would I want to be like somebody else? Why would I want to be somebody else when God made me unique and in his image? The gift of prophecy is in this house. I could walk around and lay my, head on you, my hand on you right now and tell you this is what you're called to do. Do it, do it, do it. It's in you. It's already in you. God has already deposited everything in you, everything you need. It's in you now. He's already deposited everything you need. To change your family, to change your workplace, to change your neighborhood, to change the city, to change the region. It is in you, but you have to identify who you are. You got to identify the enemy. When you identify yourself, you have to identify your struggles. Don't get boxed into life labels. If you've been dysfunctional, recognize it. Say, I've been a fool. Just say it. Just admit it. I've been a fool. I have been a fool. I have done some of the dumbest, stupidest things on the planet. It's me. I own it. I take the blame. Quit blaming everybody else. Own it. Own it. And then change. Because you can change. If you're a snoozer, and when the lock clock goes off in the morning, you hit snooze, Ten times, and you say, I can't help it. That's who I am. I'm a snoozer. If after the first snooze, the fire alarm in your house goes off, and your house fills up with smoke, and somebody else in your house starts screaming, fire! And that snooze goes off again, you're going to go, 
I'm going to wait 10 more minutes. No, you're going to change. You're going to break that cycle. You're going to get up. You're going to get your family safe. And you're going to get out of that burning house. That's what you're going to do. Well, today I came to serve you notice. Your house is on fire. Get out. Your house is on fire. Don't push the snooze button again. Your house is on fire. The planet is on fire. The body of Christ needs to be on fire. The the world is on fire with chaos, with dysfunction, with struggles, with doubts, with fears. And the demon imps are running to and fro. been living under a generational curse realize it recognize it open your eyes quit doing the same thing expecting different results Rita told me she said she said next time I'm just gonna put up one slide ish be knob you just preach She cut me from 25 or 30 down to 11. I think I'm about number three or four. (laughs) They used to call me Pharaoh because I wouldn't let the people go. They may nickname me that again. You got to know who you are. If you're going to break this cycle, you know, not because I wrote it, because I'm nothing, but God gave me some insight in this book. And if you'll, if you'll listen to what I'm telling you these next few weeks, you're going to break out. You're going to break out. I promise you, you're going to break out. It started. It started last Sunday. It's, it's breaking. It's breaking. There, there, is a, there is a crack in the glass. There is a crack in the wall. There, there is a sound sometimes. It takes a sound. When there is a, when there is a sound... When they went to battle, when the children of Israel went to battle, they would, they, would, they would sound the ram's horn. And it did several things. It was, a, it was an alarm that the enemy is on them. And it was a battle cry that we are about to start right now. You better be ready. You, better, you should have already been ready. You should have already had your armor on. You should have already been prepared. And they would sound this. And the sound, Rob, would pierce the darkness or the morning light. It would echo through the atmosphere. It would send chills down the back of all the soldiers on both sides. Because they knew the fight was on. I'm telling you today, folks, we're in a fight. The fight is on. And if you are sleeping, you need to wake up. If you think you're just going to your little job and you just have your little job where you have it and you just live in your little house on your little street in your little neighborhood and you're going to mind your own business and you're going to do your little thing, you need to wake up. We are in a fight of our life. We are in the fight of the universe. We are in the fight with good against evil. And I've read the last page and we win, but in the meantime, we are in a battle. But it's not our battle, it is the Lord's battle. Can you blow one of these? Have you ever tried to blow one? It's been a long time. I'm going to quit on that one. We always have fun at Metro Tab. If you're a guest today, you never know what's going to happen. Somebody may ride a Harley through here next Sunday. You just can't ever tell what's going to happen. We've done that before, as a matter of fact. You've got to identify who you are. You have to identify the enemy. 
See, your husband's not the enemy. Your mom and daddy are not the enemy. Your boss is not the enemy. Now, you may be in a battle against some folks that are close to you, and they're not serving God. They're not the enemy. They're the opportunity. The Apostle Paul was a chief among sinners. He was putting Christians to death. And when he had that Damascus Road experience, everything turned around and then God used him to write two-thirds of the New Testament. And before that experience, before that encounter, nobody, nobody would have expected him to write two-thirds of God's book. So you see, you got to know who you are. Identify yourself. You got to face the giant. When you recognize who the enemy is, then you got to face your giant. See, the reason some people can't break the cycle is they never face it. They put their head in the sand. They hide. You got to face your giant. I'm here to tell you today: you have to face it. Whatever your battle is, you got to face it. You can't ignore it. You can't blame. You've got to face it. You didn't hear me. You have to face your giant. You've got to look it eye to eye. You've got to stand up tall and know who you are. And see, when I say face it, all of a sudden people start cringing back. They start saying, hold on, I, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. But see, if you've identified who you are, if you've identified what's in you, if you realize you were born to be a king, if you realize the anointing that God has placed on you and the plan that he has for your life, if you, ident if you identify all of that, then when you, it's, it's not hard to face your enemy. It was not hard for David to face Goliath. Everybody else had been afraid. For 40 days he had stood in that valley and he had yelled insults against the children of Israel and the God of Israel. 40 days he had done this over and over and over. And all the other soldiers and all the other warriors and even the king who was a mighty warrior, Saul himself, even him, all of them, they were afraid to go. But David, the little young ruddy shepherd boy, came with his sling and his five stones. Or at that time he probably didn't even have five. He just came and, and, and when he heard the insults he said, Who? Who is that? I'll face him. Because he knew who he was. He had spent hours on the field tending the sheep. Tending the flock. Practicing with that sling. Kill the bear. Kill the lion. So when the time came to face the giant, he was ready to face the giant. He was not afraid. I'm sure in his spirit, I'm sure there was some apprehension. But he'd been there before. And see, when you spend your time in preparation, when you read your word, when you're practicing where you are, when you start doing what you're supposed to do and you're on your journey, then when the time comes and the giant stands before you, you face him. You face him down. You get in a staring contest with him. And you tell him, you better back up, devil. I'm anointed of God. I'm a child of the king. I was born to be a king. There's a sound in me. There's an anointing in me. There are gifts in me. There are resources in me. Everything I need has been put in me. And I will back you up and back you down. You will not conquer me. You will not overcome me. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And you know that. So you face your giant. And I sense in my spirit today that this point, this is where a lot of you are. You, you have identified yourself. You've identified the enemy. But when the giant looks at you, you back down. You run. You give up. You quit. You don't have the confidence. You don't have the boldness. All of that changes today. Yeah. David took the challenge. He faced Goliath. The name Goliath You're going to love this because names are significant. The name Goliath in the scripture means to uncover, to reveal, to expose. His name, the giant's name, meant to uncover. 
In the kingdom of God, the Bible says we have some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And when you make a fist, it's a simple thing, but when you make a fist, you don't put your thumb inside those fingers. When you go to fight somebody, you don't go into a battle and put your thumb inside and fight. You hit somebody, you'll break your thumb, right? The thumb covers, right? The thumb is on the outside. It covers the other fingers. It's for protection. And in the apostolic ministry in the kingdom of God, the thumb is represented, or the apostle is represented by the thumb. It covers the other four. It's a covering. So if you're looking for a church, you need to be in a house that has an apostolic anointing, an apostolic covering to cover you. Because if you're just out here floating from church to church and going from place to place and just going where it feels good the best on this Sunday, you're uncovered. You're exposed. And the giants that you face will be Goliath. And you're uncovered. You're exposed. You're vulnerable. And you wonder why you are defeated all the time. You wonder why the battle is so tough. It's because you're exposed. You've not gotten covered. You've not gotten in a house. You don't have the spiritual protection over you of an apostolic anointing and covering. You're quiet now. You were shouting a while ago. And people in the body of Christ just float. They never get plugged in. They shop for a church. Listen, we're not Walmart. We're not Costco. We're not Lowe's or Home Depot. We're not Target. Why do you shop a church? I might as well just preach. People go shop church. See, where's the best music? Where's the best preacher? Where's the most excitement? God may not want you there. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. If you're a child of God, you better follow the leading of the Spirit. And when he brings you to a house, get in that house. Can I make it plain? We're all servants. We're soldiers in the Lord's army. When you get in a house where you are covered, shut up and march. We want to complain. It's too hot. It's too cold. The service went too long today. I know. I preached an hour already. I know. I'm sorry. I can't help it. The Lord's been stirring in my spirit and bumping around for some time. And I put it off and tried to, try to be good. But I need to tell you. Jesus is coming soon. And if we don't rise up and be the church, nobody will. If we don't do the ministry of reconciliation and restoration, Regis, nobody will. If we don't mentor young men, nobody will. If we don't have an apostolic voice and a prophetic word, nobody will. If, if we don't pastor and preach and declare and decree and, and have the resources to, to advance the kingdom, nobody will. We are the ones that God chose. And if you're over shopping at another church when you should be in a house with an apostolic anointing and covering you, don't be surprised if your life falls apart. The name Goliath means to uncover, to reveal, to expose. And the giant Goliath, his agenda is to expose you. To expose your weaknesses. To expose your battle. To expose your weakness. To expose your struggles and your troubles and your doubts and your fears. And when he gets them exposed and you're caught, you're vulnerable. And you're going to do a couple of things. One of a couple of things. You may run. Or you may fight. Fight or flee. But when he exposes you. And you're vulnerable. And you don't have your sword. 
you don't have your shield, you're in trouble. You better have your sword always. And he said, hide it in your heart so that you wouldn't sin against him. And Goliath, he was from Gath. The word Gath, the city, the region of Gath meant press down. Like the wine press or the olive press. The way they get wine is they press grapes. The way they get olive oil is they press the olives. And the oil comes out. The juice comes out. But it is a process of pressing. And Goliath, who wants to uncover you and reveal you and expose you, is from Gath and he wants to press you and squeeze you and put you under so much pressure that you are exposed and you are breaking and crushed under the pressure of the giant that has exposed you and exposed your weaknesses. And what he does is he finds that weakness because you've been exposed and he knows you're vulnerable here or here or here. He knows it's alcohol or he knows it's heroin or he knows it's pornography or he knows it's adultery or he knows it's a perverted relationship. He finds what it is and then he just starts hammering on that spot. And just beating you and beating you down and beating you down. And he won't stop and he won't quit. And he will not give up. And he just keeps on over and over and over until you break. And we don't realize we're even in a battle. Because we're church shopping. I didn't plan to do this today, folks. I'll be honest with you. I did not plan. But this is where we are. And we have to choose. We've got to identify the enemy. We've got to know who we are. We've got to identify the enemy. And we've got to break the cycle. And I told you last week, Goliath stood for 40 days yelling insults. 40 days. I'll try not to to preach an hour next Sunday. If y'all taking medicine, it's 1238. <laughs> it takes 40 days to break a habit, to break a cycle, to start a new cycle, to start a new habit. 40 days. And I told you last week about the life cycle of a fly. The Bible teaches us that Beelzebub was the lord of the flies. And when a fly is hatched and they start their incubation process and they're in your house, every time they land, they're laying eggs. And so when you try to exterminate them, if you don't deal with them and the eggs, they'll just, they'll just more will hatch. And of course, we live in a culture where hopefully you don't have a lot of flies in your house. Hopefully. Some of the third world countries and the places that I've been, there are swarms of flies everywhere. I have, I have sat at a table to eat and, and fan flies while I'm eating and knocking them off my food the entire time with a napkin over my cup because they're landing on that the whole time because there's so many flies. And see, to break the cycle... You have to exterminate the flies and all of their eggs, and you have to do it for 40 days because if you just do it one and all at once and all the flies are dead, in a few days they'll hatch again, and here they come again. 40 days. Jesus went into the wilderness, and he was tempted 40 days. 40 is the number of testing. 40 is the number of your challenge. If you're 40 years old and this is the hardest year you've ever lived, that's why. But 41 is the number of breakthrough. 41 breaks the cycle. So when you do something, the, the, the positive motivational experts will tell you, do something for six weeks. Start a new habit. You're going to get up and work out. Then commit to do it every day for six weeks. Every day, six weeks. And you have established a new pattern, a new cycle in your life. If you do it for a week or two weeks and you quit, you didn't do it long enough to get it ingrained in you to become part of you. So you have to do it every day, six weeks, start a new cycle. So you have to break an old cycle 
And for six weeks, to break it, you can't go back for six weeks. If you stopped at the liquor store every night on the way home and you got you a six-pack, I guess you get those at the convenience store, don't you? Yeah, it's convenient. And if you've, you've always done that every day when you get off from work, then go another way. And for six weeks, break the cycle. And take that time and read your Bible. Do something different for six weeks. David took the challenge. David's name means rarely. It means fully, beloved, or to love. And so David did something that was rare. Up until that point, there were no giant killers. You didn't hear me. Giants ruled. Giants reigned. David came along and he was the first giant killer. And he became famous. He has, he has been used all over the world as an illustration. But when he got there and said, I'm going to fight, the king said, oh, let me help you. I've got this armor. Let me put this armor on you. I've got the best shield and the best helmet and the best thigh plates and breastplate and everything. I'm going to put all this on you and you'll go fight the giant. So he puts it on and here he goes. It didn't fit. It wasn't who he was. It was fine for Saul, but it wasn't who he was. So after a moment, he said, this is not me. He took all of that off. He went to the brook. He got the five smooth stones. And he went out and he fought the giant. You know the story. You know the conversation. I won't go through all that. But he used the sling. The stone sank into his forehead. And the giant that was over nine feet tall fell flat. David went over and pulled the giant's sword out of his hand and cut his head off. He was killed with his own sword. Isn't that just like God? He killed the giant and he cut off his head. So you got to break the cycle. You have to face the giant and then you got to break the cycle. How do you do that? You address the situation. Watch this. You look at the enemy through God's eyes. Real simple. I'm almost done. You look at the enemy through God's eyes. You know, David, here he is down here. He's probably 5, 10, or 11. I don't know. I don't, I don't perceive him as being a really big guy. He might have been 6'2". I don't know. But if he was 6'2", and he turns and he looks... At Goliath. Goliath was over nine feet tall. Here he is looking down on David. And David says, hey, buddy, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. You're going down today. I'm breaking this cycle. You've been out here 40 days. I'm breaking the cycle. You've been insulting us long enough. I'm breaking the cycle. You've been intimidating and killing people long enough. You've been re exposing them and revealing them long enough. Come on, somebody. You've been crushing them. And stomping on them and putting them under your feet and pressing them and causing pressure. Some of you have been living under pressure long enough. You've been squeezed. You've been pressed. The giant has stood over you and intimidated you long enough. And David says, for you, I'm going to kill the giant. And when David killed Goliath, it set the precedent. Don't miss this. It set the pattern. It set things in motion for you to kill your giant because David was unassuming and unexpected. He was a little guy. He was not who everybody else would have chosen. His brothers would have been chosen first. The king would have chosen somebody else. But God chose David to show you and to show me that anybody can be a giant killer. And when he took him down, it was over. He addressed the situation. He looked at the enemy through God's eyes. He's looking up and sees this nine-foot giant. But David looks past the giant and sees the God of the universe lording over this nine-foot giant who dwarfed in the presence of God. I don't care how big you think your giant is. If you look at your giant through God's eyes, it's nothing. It's easy. Your giant is a little thing. Your giant is weak. Your giant is 
powerless. Your giant is nothing. Your giant is a loser. Your giant cannot stand against my God. I don't care how big your giant is. I don't care how old your giant bully is. I don't care how many other people he has killed. He will not kill you because you are looking at him through the eyes of God. God is standing behind him and one breath, one blow of his nostril will kill your giant. I want you to understand, we must look at our giants through God's eyes. Don't let the enemy sway you. Don't get your eyes off God, off the giant. Keep your eyes on God and start living different. Deuteronomy 28 says this, the Lord will conquer your enemies. The Lord. The Lord will conquer your enemies. Let me translate. Your assignments that are against you. The assignments of the giants, the, assi- the generational curses, the battles, the depression, the fear, the sickness, the disease, the poverty. What, whatever your giant is, the Lord will conquer your enemies. The assignments against, against you when they attack you. Watch this. They will attack you from one direction because the enemy's stupid. He's stupid. He keeps doing the same dumb things over and over and then we fall for it. But they'll come against you in one direction but they will scatter in seven directions. That's what God's Word says for you. So you're becoming your best you. Can I make a declaration over you today? Can I do it? You are a giant killer. Today, You are a giant killer. 1 John 4, 4. You can be certain that you belong to God. You can be certain. You can know for sure today, this moment, that you belong to God and have conquered them. For the one who is living in you is far greater than the one who is in the world. Starting now. If you've never been a giant killer before, We cover you with a giant killer anointing. We cover you. We pray for you every day. We protect you in the spirit realm. We believe in you. I told Rita on the the way to church this morning, I forget the exact conversation, but I said, you know, I have spent my life trying to tell people you are greater than you think you are. I spent my life trying to encourage, to inspire, to build up, to teach people that you are somebody made in the image of God. So starting now, you are becoming your best you. Your gifts are released. Your anointing is released. Your abilities are released. I cancel your fears. I cancel your doubts. I release faith in you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are a giant killer. Father. Lord, you know my heart today. Lord, you know I had another direction to go. And I've tried to be sensitive to your spirit. And I know, Lord, I've imposed on people's times much longer than we would normally do. But I pray, God, that by my willingness to obey and be sensitive to you, that you have used these few words to touch somebody, to break an assignment, to break a curse, to instill a word of hope, to let faith rise in them. So that somebody in this place, hopefully more than one, but hopefully somebody today got it. Somebody realizes they don't have to stay where they are. That you've anointed them as a giant killer. And you are releasing them today to demolish, to destroy, to crush. Not only the giant they are facing individually, but other giants that they will face in their family. And also they will be able to help others in their family and friends when they see giants. God, that today you are birthing a new generation of giant killers today you are doing something new in us today you are giving us new confidence bold confidence that you are rising in us that the anointing that is in you is in us in the mighty name of Jesus 
we declare it so I declare giant killers in this room and those watching by internet and those that will watch by television or internet later we declare right now they are giant killers as they submit themselves to you and resist the devil and the devil has to flee and they invite you into their heart Lord they will receive an anointing they will receive a power they will receive authority in the name of Jesus to take them to another level in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the strong name of Jesus God we need your help Lord help us to wake up and realize we're in a battle we're in a war and the end is near help us to realize what we have to do help us to quit playing church and quit playing life but help us oh God to be to be real not to be spiritual nuts but help us oh God to be sensitive with discernment to win the lost and make disciples anoint us oh God help us to get it oh God Oh, God, we call on you, God. We call on you, God. We call on you, God. We call on you. Oh, we call on you. We need your touch. We need your anointing. We need what you have in us, oh, God. Pour it in us. We need faith to rise, oh, God. Lord, give us discernment. Give us wisdom. Give us a passion and a desire for your word, for more of your word. In the name of Jesus, in the strong name of Jesus. Let the healing flow. Let the gifts operate. Let them manifest. Meet the needs that are here individually and corporately, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Would you stand? sincerely want to apologize for keeping you so long today it's okay I know I understand but if you're a guest today we're so honored that you came we try to be real and God is here and he moves but I sincerely usually don't keep people this long so so please come back come here Pastor Rita be preaching a few days she's better than me she always raises the bar lift your right hand pray this prayer with me just say Father God today I realize who I am that the gifts you put in me the passions I have is my identity to do some great things you have a plan for my life I recognize my enemies it's a spiritual battle and I recognize the enemy. I've identified the enemy. And today, I'm going to face every giant that has intimidated me and pushed me back and held me back and defeated me in the past. From this day forward, my past will not define me. My future is in your hands so I'm facing the giant and I'm breaking the cycle today is a new level it is a new season I'm crossing the threshold in the name of Jesus to be a giant killer I will not back up I will not give up I will not quit because Jesus is in me and leading me and I believe that I declare that I receive that and I'm walking forward in faith in the mighty name of Jesus amen amen and amen you're a giant killer <laughs>